This is Thoughts Become Things. With each episode, we'll help you reach the highest creative potential that God has for you. With your host, a teacher, life coach, a dream coach, and motivational speaker, Jeremy Lopez. Hey everyone and welcome to another exciting podcast of Thoughts Become Things. I'm Jeremy Lopez and so glad and honored you guys are with me again today. Now, I don't know about you, but here we are in Alabama. We have crazy weather. In fact, there's supposed to be like tonight some tornado watches as we have thunderstorms pass through. After a while, you just become numb to it. You know, you're like, okay, whatever, <laughs> you know, so because it's just so frequently happens here. So it doesn't really bother me. I'm not really bothered uh, by a lot of different things, to be honest with you. Maybe I should sometimes. Maybe I shouldn't but I'm just not really a big fearful person about certain things. But, you know, I just get used to it. Um, but all you know, all you out there, I give a shout out to those having good weather, especially those in California. We are so jealous right now because your weather tends to always be good. I love it. But um, I'm excited about today, I really am. I hope you guys will get something out of today's uh, really message because I really got to thinking and pondering on this idea to present to you guys today because a lot of times there's such a misunderstanding in the scriptures, okay? Now, a misunderstanding understanding of basically when we deal with the Bible, you know, uh, which once again, we have so many thousands of translations and people can interpret it different ways. But there's a couple of verses that are actually pretty cool to, to point out that really will be, we'll say, principle worthy to uh, to really go across the board for everyone. If that makes any sense. Uh, that doesn't really have to have a deep interpretational part of it, you know, but really just like we can sit at face value and say, hey, you know what? This is a good principle. This is really good. So I wanted to present that to you guys today. Okay, so I'm going to read from you guys today, uh, Deuteronomy 29, 29. All right? Because we have a lot of spiritual people on here, a lot of Christian people. Just a lot of people who are just like, hey, you know what? We want to know more about God, you know? So Deuteronomy 29, 29 says something really interesting. Now, some of you might have heard this before, and some of you might not have, but it's good to refresh your mind on understanding a little bit uh, how we can see this and say, oh, wow, I don't have to know everything. <laughs> and Deuteronomy 29, 29 says this, The secret things belong to the Lord our God, but the things that are revealed belong to us and to His people forever, that we may do all the words according to His law. Now, I want to focus on that for a moment, because I like the first part of it. It says, The secret things belong to the Lord our God, but the things that are revealed belong to us. Now, I want everybody to think this thing through for a moment because as a life coach, I life coach people, sometimes do some counseling to people every week on Tuesdays and Thursdays all day long. I'm packed, slam packed um, because there's so many people who want to ask questions that want to be able to get maybe a prophetic reading or they want to, you know, have, you know, have been coaching through a lot of their paradigms and sort of break through in some areas of their life. They can't seem to get their brain maybe uh, to leave the shore of a situation and they feel like they're stuck at times. Times. And a lot of times people ask me things such as, I want an answer to this situation, you know, um, and they'll quote scriptures such as scriptures that I like, you know, as far as, um, you know, uh, all good things flow down from the Father of lights and in him there's no shadow of turning. Great scripture. Another scripture talks about the things as far as asking it shall be given, seeking you shall find, knocking the door shall be opened. Pretty much I think everybody in the world knows that verse. Whether you're Christian or not, pretty much everybody knows that verse, right? But the thing that I noticed about within this verse um, is we tend to throw those other two verses and several others um sort of in the in the in the ring like a wrestling ring and we say that means we can understand anything and everything nothing is hidden for us and the bible even says something really cool but it says that some things you know the things are revealed by the spirit to us but i wanted to be able to take this scripture this powerful principle in God's Word that really just sort of opens their eyes because this will help a lot of people who struggle a lot with, I got to have an answer, I got to know, I got to know, I got to know. My life coaching prophetic part of me lets you know, no, you don't. No, you don't. Um, I have several clients, you know, and a couple of them will ask me things such as, I've got to know the answer, I've got to know the answer. And they will literally lose sleep over not having an answer, and they will push themselves to the test to say, but I know God just wants to tell me. God is going to give me this answer. And I want somebody to say, look, if you're frustrated, if you find yourself asking and pleading and begging, you're, you're doing the wrong thing. That's not what God's never, God never says, come up from my throne boldly and beg. 
He never says, you know, beg and it shall be given, because that doesn't do any good. In fact, if you think about it, children that, that, uh, that beg their parents can be very annoying. Hello. Because I know you're like, oh, would you hush? If I said no, I mean no. And sometimes we tend to look at that and say, do you know how annoying that is when somebody begs? Because some things are just the answer is flat out no. And I like this verse because when we balance, you know, the things within the Bible out, we recognize some really cool things. And that is, the secret things belong to God, but the things that are revealed belong to us. What does this mean? It means that not everything you need to figure out. In fact, it really pulls into play the fact that the secret things belong to God, which means the secrets don't belong to you. They belong to God. And you here you are trying to get an answer. On top of an answer, on top of an answer for every little thing in your life because you've got to know, you've got to know, you've got to know. And a lot of times, here's the thing. That is a little bit of, it speaks of of your insecurity, but it also comes from a place of feeling as if fear has to, you know, fear is gripping you. Why? Because fear comes sometimes in the unknown. In fact, fear comes a lot of times the unknown. So when things tend to be like, we don't have an answer for it, we can't figure it out, we can't put a shape or structure to it, a lot of times people have a lot of fear factors that says, this bothers me, I've got to figure out everything, I've got to know everything, I've got to know where everything is, I've got to know how everything functions and flows, because if not, some people, it literally drives them crazy, and, it, and, and they don't know how to handle it. And a lot of times, we don't stop to realize that the Bible makes a plan to see secret things belong to God, which God is saying this to you. The secrets don't belong to you. They don't, you, you don't need to know secrets. Okay? It doesn't, in fact, in fact, if you think about the scripture, here's what God's saying. It's none of your business. Some things that are secretive to you are none of your business because it says if things are revealed to you, then they're, that's, that belongs to you. Which means some things that God will allow you to have revelation on, an aha moment, an epiphany, enlightenment, hey, whatever word you want to use is fine with me because they all pretty much are the same, you know? But, but when you have this aha moment, this enlightened moment of revelation where it's like, oh, I got it. Then all of a sudden you realize that was given or handed to you. Now you are the rightful heir. <laughs> you you own that answer now. Now when we say own the answer, what we're saying is this. That means that you have got to begin to understand that it's been given and granted to you. So all of a sudden you look at that and you realize, you know what? This has been allowed Allow for me to get to get my hands wrapped around it. For me to begin to quote unquote, we'll say own it for lack of better words, because it's been revealed to me. If it's been revealed to you, it's yours, right? But if it has not, your begging and pleading is only hurting you, not God. It's not, you know, it's just, you're just frustrating yourself. And you have to understand that, that everyone on planet Earth actually lives a life of faith. I don't care if you're, well, I care, but you know what I mean when I say this. If you're Buddhist, Hindu, Christian, spirituality, any denomination of Christianity, if you're whatever. Let's be real about it, folks. The Bible says something really plain, because many of you are like, I hate when you mention other religions. Well, you need to get over it. It's your sacred cow. You need to burn that sacred cow, right? Because guess what? They exist, whether you like it or not. <laughs> so so when you look at that, you think to yourself, the Bible says something really cool. God says, I have dealt with every man the measure of faith. I have get, dealt. In other words, I have given every man the measure of faith. What does that mean? And what God is saying is, I've given every human on being on planet Earth, even the atheist, even the sat- Satanist, do we hate to even say that, don't we? You know, uh, the Buddhist, the Muslim, the Hindu, the Christian, the every denomination. It means every single soul on this planet, guess what, has been given a measure of faith. Why? Because if you didn't have a measure of faith, you couldn't get out up in the morning. You couldn't take a shower. You couldn't walk. You couldn't talk. You couldn't get on your phone. Why? Because it's letting you know you got the measure of faith that keeps you going alive every day, trusting your car. You you know, no one gets out of the bed and says, oh God, I hope my feet work today. Oh my God, what if these legs don't work? People don't do that. Now, unless you have a problem, sometimes maybe a kind of sickness or, or disease that maybe would allude towards that, we get that, right? But pretty much the the average person is not going to do that because you autom- automatically have an autopilot level of faith that just kicks in automatically. And that's it's easy for me to deal with people that, had, that live in fear because... They don't realize, or maybe I don't have any faith. Sure you do. Sure you do. You couldn't, you wouldn't be alive if you didn't have faith, period. Because you don't know how much it is ingrained in you to get up, go to the bathroom, to shave, to get a shower, to walk, to talk, to move your arms, move your legs. Everything requires faith, which is the autopilot of your, of your conscious mind saying, I just kick it automatically. That's faith. That's faith that just kicks in. 
You know, and sometimes when you get the sub, the, the excuse me, the subconscious is what I meant. But when you get the conscious mind, you know, in the now moment, saying, "Oh, I, you know, do I have faith to do this?" Well, all of a sudden, that conscious mind is going to kick in to begin to show you. Wait a minute, you know, I don't know. Do you? I don't know. Do you? Because you're going to have fear about it. But yet, you have faith so much that you are where you are today because of that. You know, you have faith in God. You have faith in your legs. You have faith in faith in within your body. You have faith within your mind to think. You have faith within your car to drive. So, so you've been dealt a measure measure of faith, which means you own that faith. It's yours. Okay. Everyone has a tag or a label of the name on it with faith on it that actually is part of their their existence, right, and their identity. So. When you see this, it means this, that sometimes when you look at the secret things and yet you feel like God is not revealing it to you, well, guess what? Walk by faith and not by sight, folks. Get to realize that everything belongs to you, all right? You haven't been born with a silver spoon in your mouth, okay? I'll say it again. It's funny, but it's true. God is not a sugar daddy. He's not your Santa Claus. He's not obligated or owes you anything but to love you and to and everything else is by grace. <laughs> I mean, come on, you know? And so through that, we've got to begin to look and realize that, you know, what this means is if I don't get an answer, I don't sweat it. I just don't. Because first of all, you know, I'm pretty secure myself. I have faith. I have grace. I'm like, you know, it's not a big deal. Because I I tend to focus on things that I do. Maybe I do understand. I know how something works. Um, and I focus on those things. Because obviously it's not the timing, nor maybe it may never be the timing for me to begin to understand everything else. And I know some people who feel like I've got to understand everything. I've got to have an answer. I've got to have an answer. God will tell me. And I'm like, well, how's that working for you? Because you don't see, because according to me and you on the phone, you're the one that sounds pretty stressed out. I don't. You sound frustrated. I don't. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, not just, just getting real with you folks, you know? And so you're like, you're the one that called me. So obviously that proves me you're the one that has a problem with this. If you've got a problem with it, guess what? That means it's it's bothering you. You have an issue because you don't have an answer. And so it's, it's so the scripture is very honest, honest and plain and blunt saying, look, secrets belong to me. Everything, all these secrets belong to me. Mysteries belong to me. However, if, if you get a revelation on it, then that revealing of that secret, then it does belong to you. I love this verse because it's really an eye opener to say, don't sweat the small stuff, folks. Walk by faith if you don't get an answer for it. And truthfully, a lot of things in life is lived out by experience. You know, the greatest thing for me, the greatest joy in my life, honestly, is having experiences. Life, life sort of equals experiences. If you're going to live life, you're going to have experiences. And if you're having experiences, that means you must be living life, right? So look at this and realize that, you know, so many people tend to feel like this, this, if I know the answer, it'll help me grow. If I have the answer, it'll help me grow. No, it does not. Answers and truth are not the same thing, my friend. Truth sets you free. Answers don't. Knowing something of an answer, you, you, you think because you're, because you maybe you don't have the education or maybe the awakening of what you're saying. But truthfully, answers don't, don't really help you. I and mean, well, let me put it this way. They might help you, but they don't set you free. Nowhere in the Bible does it say answers set you free. So just because you have an answer to something, you're convincing yourself as if you know more than God, to say, if I have an answer for this, oh my gosh, you just don't know what it would do for me. Right? And God's like, the answer is not going to do anything for you. You think it will, and you're trying to convince me it will, but God's like, but it's not going to, it's not going to work. It ain't happening. You know? Because God knows what you need more than you think you do. So if you don't have an answer for something, for a situation, here's one thing I tell people. Um, had a beautiful, wonderful lady friend of mine who uh, part is a, sharp, a client, a good friend of the ministries, and you know she called one day and she was like, you know, having a session with me. She said, "I don't understand my, you know, my granddaughter is, you know, uh, is transitioned. You know, she's, you know, transgender. I don't want to do. You know, I don't understand." And I said, "Hold on, stop. Wait a minute." Understanding is not where it lies, folks. Do you know, do you realize nowhere in the Bible does it say that God says, I want you to understand me? Nothing, nowhere, not one verse in the entire scriptures does it say, I want you to understand me. If you're trying to understand God, it's not going to work. As you say in the deep south, it ain't happening, right? Why? Because God never, God knows you cannot understand Him and you can't understand other people. Because understanding is not where it lies, folks. It's walking by faith. It's moving by love. 
If love transcends understanding. In fact, biblically, it actually says, I'll give you peace to cover up that, that understanding level. What you don't understand, what you do understand. Peace is here, uh, and peace triumphs over understanding. And so when a lot of people say, I gotta understand, I gotta understand her, I gotta understand the situation. No, you don't. No, you don't. No, you don't. There's no, there's no freedom in understanding. There's a freedom in wisdom. And wisdom is the one that cries out. All right, which means wisdom cries out to say, no, if you have wisdom on the situation, because let me tell you something, folks, wisdom does not guarantee you of understanding. People say, I got wisdom on the situation. That's great, and that's probably true on some on certain situations or certain people. However, wisdom does not equal understanding. Wisdom is literally saying, I have wisdom to navigate through something that I don't understand. Wisdom means I can navigate through something that I get, that I don't get that I think is horrible, that I think is good, that I think is far-fetched, or that I think is right up my alley. <laughs> Wisdom is letting you know how to walk through a situation, not understand it. Totally big difference here. And many of us have been sort of programmed by, let's say, I don't know what, <laughs> you know, to really begin to think to ourselves, I gotta understand the situation, I, gotta, I can't understand her, I can't understand, you know, them, I can understand God, you know, and they, they freak out because they don't realize understanding is not where it is. Now, God does let you know in, in, in Proverbs that there is a level of, of giving, getting understanding. But you have to remember that when you know, to read, read that verse, it talks about wisdom, and then it says, get understanding. It says, get wisdom. Then it says, get understanding. Notice how they're two different things. Did you get that? And so notice how it's two different things. And what that is saying is it's literally letting you know that there are two, uh, there are two things, not opposites, but the two things of under, uh, you know, that it's trying to tell you. So here's what it says. It says, get wisdom, comma, get understanding. Proverbs chapter four. Are you with me? It's Proverbs chapter four, verse one it says, listen, my sons, to a father's instructions, pay attention and gain understanding. Okay. Now we read within this, within this amazing part of, of this is under, is really, is understanding where, where it's coming from. Cause what it's coming from is this. Get wisdom and you can get understanding, but they're not the same thing. And it says, you know, but basically it says, get wisdom, get understanding. Do not forget my words or swerve from them. Do not forsake wisdom. She will protect you. Love her and she will watch over you. Wisdom is supreme. Therefore get wisdom. Though it cost all of you, I see, though it cost all of you, how, all of you have, that you have, get understanding. Now notice this. What it's letting you know, it's, if you look in the original language, it's letting you know in the original language, wisdom and understanding are two different things. Why? Because you gotta know how to navigate through a situation that you don't understand. That's what wisdom does. But then it also says, and oh, by the way, this is what it means in the individual language. It means, hey, get wisdom, and by the way, get understanding. So in other words, if you get wisdom of something, and if you get understanding, great. If you don't get understanding on it, it doesn't matter. Wisdom can stand, can still stand on its own. It doesn't have to compl complement, you know, uh, uh, understanding. So that's what it's alluding towards. So wisdom is letting you know, I gotta maintain my peace of things I don't understand, okay? There's secrets here I don't get. But wisdom will walk me through this thing. And if I gain understanding within it, if God decides to begin to reveal this to me, and I, and then I'll begin to get it and own it, that means then I'll have wisdom and understanding. But if I don't have understanding, it's okay. Wisdom is one, is the one crying out. Wisdom is the one that's, that's letting me know, just walk by faith. It's okay. Don't frustrate yourself. If you don't understand it, no big deal. That secret belongs to God. If, he, if it's revealed to you, then it belongs to you. If it doesn't, then hey, you know what? Lay off. Back off, you know? Because not everything in creation you have to have, you have to have an understanding for. A lot of things you can. I don't want to say you could. You, should, you can. If it's revealed to you. So why? Because the main part of all these scriptures, if you put them all together, it's, it's letting you know this. More than anything, you have peace. You, you get your peace and you get wisdom. Because anything outside of peace will just fragment you. I don't have an answer. I don't understand. What do I do? What do I do? Because you're fragmented. You've lost your wholeness. You have something, you have something missing and you have, and you have something broken in you. Because peace means nothing missing, nothing broken. So the opposite of that is letting you know that if you're, if you're frustrated because you're trying to get an answer for something, you're, you're fragmenting your, you're literally prophesying to be fragmented and you're, you're, you're literally breaking yourself in half. Because that's what it does. So, 
when you have wisdom, guess what? Wisdom says, I'll walk you through it, no problem. Whether you get it, don't get it, no big deal. Peace is saying, you remain in this, because if you don't get it, don't understand it, not a problem. So which one's more important, folks? i got to understand something. No, what's more important is, you know what? I am maintaining and sustaining my peace. And while I'm sustaining my peace, i got wisdom. I can walk through this. If God chooses to give me an understanding for something, great. I'm going to ask him if I don't get it. No problem at all. Some secrets God owns. All right. He validates. It's his. He's the owner of it. Not my, not my problem. Why? Because it lets you know, stay whole, stay peace, stay grace, stay love, stay in the power of wisdom. Don't worry about it. I don't let things get to me to where I've got to know the answer. If I don't have the answer, no, no sweat, no biggie. That's where you have to begin to understand this. So here we're talking about, as we come to a close in the podcast, here is what we're talking about. Is don't allow, don't allow the things around you that are over your head, going under your feet, you know, going on the side of you, something that is overwhelming you, something that is puzzling to you, don't allow it to affect you. Ask God for wisdom and say, you know what? Take a deep breath and say, I've got peace because I'm so whole right now. Because <laughs> I'm whole. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask God to take a deep breath. I'm gonna say, you know, do you need me to understand this? And you might say, wow, you know what? Got it. Got understanding. If you don't have understanding about it, God's like, no, hold on. Do you hear wisdom crying to you? Then walk in wisdom. Walk in wisdom. It'll get you, it'll get you through the situation. And you just hold your head up high and smile, smile through it. And just like I said earlier to that lady about, you know, her daughter or her granddaughter being transgender, I don't get it. I understand. Well, you know what? It's not your business to understand. See what I'm saying? I mean, here's the key thing. We're so quick in the world to judge. We're so quick in the world to, you know, if I don't understand it, it's got to be wrong. That is so evil. And I'm, I'm let me say a little, little bluntly to many of you. When the, I've heard many people in the body of Christ, especially, I don't get it. I don't understand it. I don't understand this type of person. Well, you know, uh, don't you love the accent, folks? But um, I've, I've been in Alabama too long. But, you know, when you hear that, you think to yourself, okay, well, it's none of your business. What other people think about you is none of your business. What other people live out is none of your business. If you can't figure somebody out, doesn't mean they're wrong. It simply means it's not your business to figure out. And so your business is to love people, love people. Who knows? I mean, you know, we really never know. We, I mean, we might get, you know, one day when we die and we're in the presence of God, God might say, you know what? You went crazy trying to call somebody, you know, to, to uh, you know, get understanding on something. You went crazy trying to figure out things or figure out people. Well, guess what? That was none of your business. And look what you, look what you did yourself. It altered you and t- it took you down a different path because you were f- so frustrated and you got on your, on your soapbox thinking, if I don't understand that person or that, or that woman or, or that man or, or, or that situation, you know, gotta be wrong. God, you know, and you're, you're sitting here, no matter what it's about, God, it's guys, no matter what, what the situation's about, doesn't matter. You know, and you gotta begin to look at this and say, like this lady, the wonderful friend of mine, that it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. God never asks you to understand people. That's none of your business. What is your business is to love them. Love always transcends past what you don't get. Love transcends past what you don't understand. Love transcends past things that you are frustrated about. Because frustration only comes about because you don't get it. You don't understand the situation, the person, the problem, the road you're walking on. Well, you know what? Get love. Get love. If anything, gain wisdom and love. That's what you need right there. Remain in your, in your peaceful place. You know, remain in your place of being at peace with your life. You know, like the scripture says, work out your own salvation if you're in trembling. Not your job to work out everybody's salvation. Not your job to feel like it's your job to make everybody believe just like you. That's none of your business. It's not your job to make everybody think like you. That's none of your business or their business. It's, 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 it's respecting them as an individual and loving them. You know, it's the old saying, we can agree to disagree. The, the truth is we should never even get to that point. Think about it. We should never even get to the point of saying, you know, um, how I feel and how you feel. And I don't agree with you and you agree with me and I don't agree with you either. Well, we'll just agree to disagree. Well, it should never even get to that point. The moment somebody talks to you, if you don't get it, if you want to ask and say, hey, can you explain to me about the situation? Can you explain to me about this project we're doing at work? Hey, can you explain to me about, you know, uh, why you love so and so? Can you explain this to me? Why, you know, this and this and this and, you know, why you did this in your life, whatever. Then if they choose and you, and, and you, and you, and they speak it and then you sit here and 
you find yourself saying, Oh, that's all. Well, thank you. You really enlightened me on this, on the subject. I thank you. So I got that. But if you find yourself saying, I just don't get it. I just don't understand it. Stop right there. Because the moment you feel that way, you should never react. Because automatically, you, not them, you just tore down yourself. You just fragmented yourself. Not them. Don't, don't blame it on them. Oh, I can't get them, so they're wrong, and it's affecting my spiritual walk with the Lord. No, it's not. You're frustrated because you don't understand that person. That's the bottom line. And if you don't understand it, then, you know, and, and if, if somebody explains something to you, you say, you know what, I don't have an understanding about that, but that doesn't, here's what you have to say, but that doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Hey, I love God more than anything in my whole entire life. But guess what? I don't understand everything about God, but I love Him, right? And so your job is to see everyone else like, just like you do God. I don't understand God completely, but I know God. I love God. God's the center of my attention, my life. So is my family. So are my friends. So are, so is anyone. So guess what? I don't have to under, if I can understand God, how on earth and why on earth do we feel like we have to understand each other? If you don't get it, you don't get it. Then leave it at the altar. Leave it right there at the front door. You know, you know, and close the front door, for lack of a word, spiritually speaking, and just say, doesn't matter. Maybe, maybe that secret about you. In other words, not that like that, you know, you're hitting some dark, hidden adultery secret. And I'm not talking about that kind of secret, okay? But I'm talking about something that maybe of a, of a lack of understanding. Maybe that secret, God is saying, you don't own that anyway. Hello. You don't own that anyway, so that's none of your business. If it's revealed to you, then you can own the understanding of that. But if it's not, it's not your business. I, I own that secret. All right. And sometimes I believe God brings every last one of us into a secret place. Notice how we talk about that. You know, people always used to tell me in the charismatic move, they would say, Oh, I'm going to my secret place. Think about what you just said. It's because such a, things become such a buzzword, we don't even think about it. A secret place. And the Bible mentions about a secret place. Well, secret means that, just that, a secret. All right, doesn't mean you're in the wrong because you're going to a secret place, you know, in your mind or your spirit or in prayer or meditation, whatever it is you do, that's your secret place. Well, it doesn't mean you're doing something wrong. So the word secret doesn't always represent something wrong or evil or bad. You got a secret. Oh, what is it? Why don't we do that? Sometimes secrets can just be, hey, you got a secret? That's, that's good. That's none of my business then. Great. I hope that secret works for you. I hope it works out for you. You know, whatever it is that you're pondering. And we could take the same thing, the same exact scripture, and not just see it from God saying this to us, but we can see us saying it to other people as well. And that is this. That you know what? There are secrets I have that if you don't understand it, doesn't make it wrong. There are secrets that I have. If, if it's not, un, it's not, if it's not unveiled to you, for you to understand or for you to get it, then you know what? That belongs to me, not you. Hello, folks. You're, you know, you're obligated to stay transparent. But you're not obligated to give every one of your deepest, darkest secrets away. There are some secrets that are just from Jeremy Lopez that you don't, ne- you will never understand, and, and, and it hasn't been revealed to you unless I choose to reveal it to you, and yet that is, it still doesn't mean you understand it. So guess what? Some secrets I own the rights to, and I'm glad I do, because they're not, if they haven't been unveiled to you, then just they're none of your business. Hello? Can I get the witness from the choir here? And many of you are, you know, and many of you have secrets. You know why? Because we're all hidden secrets in God. All of us are hidden secrets. And to some people in our path of life, we will unveil ourselves. And some people we won't. I'll close with this. Think of Joseph. Joseph uh, was promoted after going through so much hell in his life. Promoted, you know, sort of second command in, you know, in Egypt. The whole, the whole uh, you know, place was just like reeking with famine, right? And all of a sudden, it's like his half-brothers who wanted to kill him approached him, didn't recognize him, did not recognize him. And all of a sudden, I, 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 maybe they wore, maybe he wore like a, a hoodie. I don't know, maybe, you know, some type of back then. Maybe he wore some kind of royal robe that covered up maybe his head and maybe just showed a little bit of his face and nobody got him. But somehow there was a covering that actually was uncovered. And his half brothers got, you know, got it in the sense of seeing him and recognizing him after the fact. But, but when, as they were approaching, they didn't recognize him. The Bible says so. This shows you that that it's it's the person's right to own their secrets, 
And when they decide to remove the veil, remove the covering, remove the hoodie, for lack of better words, for you to see it or hear it or or try to understand it, that's their business, not yours, right? It's called respecting human humanity, respecting each other and seeing individualism should be a respect and an honor. Your job and my job is not to unveil every single person on planet Earth and strip them of their rights and strip them of their power and strip them of their, you know, um, of all their secrets because what we do is we're we're, we're literally, this is what I like, this is a harsh word, but it's true. We literally, we, Christianity, a lot of people in the body of Christ would rather rape, literally spiritually rape people than anything, and they think they're doing what's right. Your job is not to rip off somebody's spiritual clothing and say, I will find out, you must tell me. I will have my, you know, I'll have my way. I'll understand you. Or if not, you know, you're, you know, you're considered unclean, you know. And the truth is, you look at that and you think, how many times have we done that to people? When we don't realize people's right to be secretive in a good thing, okay, not bad, but in a good way, because the Bible makes it plain. If it's a bad secret, you know, what's done in darkness shall be revealed in the light. If something's not revealed in the light over, over a certain length of time, folks, then guess what? Maybe their secret's not evil or bad. Hello? Can I talk to somebody here? Are you listening? Maybe it's not bad. And you have to deserve... Many of you hearing the sound of my voice right now, you know you have secrets in your life that are not hidden, dark, deep, you know, horrible, horrible, you know, sins. And I hope you don't. If you do, hey, you don't pray about them. But um, if you don't, guess what? They're yours. You don't owe it to everyone to say, you know, to tell everybody, you know, your quirks or your patterns or your ADD or your OCD, what you do or your pattern of what you do. I mean, you don't owe that to people. You don't. To be very honest with you, you don't owe it to people who you love. You don't owe it to people to show your, the pictures of your children off to people. You don't owe it to people. You choose the right of what you want to unveil to people. That's your choice, your right, because it's your life. And you, because you understand that you are a secret and a mystery hidden and locked away in God. And if God can have secrets, like He just said He did, so can you. Alright? If they're bad, like I said, let me rephrase. If they're bad and evil and, and something, the darkness of that, because of His love, you'll be unveiled. People will see that. Because He wants you healed more than anything. But if, but if you have secrets that are just for your life, that are mysteries. Nobody's business, folks. All right? Nobody's business. So apply that to other people. Apply that under other people. Move in wisdom. If you get understanding, great. If you don't, no biggie. Remain, remain in your peace. Let wisdom walk you through stuff. And just keep your head held high with a smile on your face and say, I, the only thing I owe people is to love them unconditionally, regardless. That's what I owe people. What people tell me about themselves, what I find out about people, you know what, hey, that, if that happens, it happens. And then I'm held accountable or responsible for what I do with that information. To either cover them, because the love covers even the negative bad secrets. The Bible says love covers a multitude of sin. Even that, this word of, I gotta expose you, I gotta expose her, I gotta expose him. That's an, I'm sorry, that's an evil thing. That's not your business. Because the Bible never says it. It says what's done in secret shall be revealed in the light. Which means what is done in a deep, hard, a hidden, dark place of your life. People, it's nobody's business to do that. It's God's business. Because He will see fit in the timing which He needs to, to gently and lovingly expose something that He knows you're struggling with. Because if something is brought to the light in a negative way, it tends to bring a little bit of embarrassment. But God will gently begin to guide us. He's a gentleman. And He'll begin to open you up to show you the light that can be revealed uh, maybe out of an addiction or whatever. But when it deals with your life being a mystery and a secret of you and your, and let's say who you love or what you do and your children and what you eat, you know, and where you work, I mean, that's your business. It's nobody else's business. Those are your secrets. And you own the right to them just like God owns the right to his own secrets, right? And if he chooses to reveal, just like if you choose to reveal, hey, you know what? It's your business and it's God's business. Isn't that a beautiful story? That's the place I want you guys to grab today because you know what? We can cut out a lot of pain in people's lives today with this message. We can cut out a lot of embarrassment. We can cut out a lot of people feeling like, you know, their, their, their frustration. We can cut out a lot of people feeling like, oh, I gotta tell the whole world my entire business. No, respect yourself. Respect yourself enough to say it's okay. I'm a mystery myself in God. Right? So it's okay. It's okay. 
Just know the difference between good secrets and mysteries and bad secrets. <laughs> Are you with me? And I, and when you look at that, you realize, you know what? I honor me to keep my life private for Jeremy Lopez. Why? Because I don't want my, my whole world, I don't want the whole world to know my every bit of my business. You know why? Because I respect me. And I respect my life. And and this might sound contrary because you might not hear this in church, but as we respect God, did you know God respects you? God respects and honors you as well. Because you're his you're his you're his child, you're his son. I mean, you are part of God, and, and knowing that God is saying, I respect you. I would never make a fool a fool out of you. I would never embarrass you in front of people. I mean, unless there's something that really is destroying your life. And taking you down and knowing it's a do or die situation, then even through that, he said he, he said he would still love you regardless. So, the idea is that loving kindness will just draw you to repentance. But other than that, if they're good secrets about who you are, hey, it's your business. No one else is. All right, just remember that today. I hope this really helped each and every one of you because every one of you, we need more of a healthier gospel and we need more of a, a healthier message. And plus, let me just say this in there for my huge law of attraction people because I'm a big e law of attraction person. Is the things you know that you're held accountable for knowing? Sometimes it's good if we don't always know everything about everyone. Because maybe we can, in that moment, we can focus on ourselves, work it out our own salvation. In other words, work out our own projection of what we're looking for, of what we want in our lives. Because sometimes you've got to focus on you and find out exactly what it is you need to attract into your life, into your world, because you got to change your life, too. If you want to change the world, you got to change yourself first, right? you got to have pretty much what you know you need to have that's going to begin to empower you within this life. So, hey, Law of Attraction people, i got your back, all right? And this message is for you as well as everyone listening on this planet. So, I hope this message began to help each one of you out. I love you each, each of you dearly. I respect each one of you dearly. And I honor each one of you dearly who actually are part of this podcast, are part of the ministry, get prophetic words from me, get my books. If you're not on the hot off the press with the book club, Club, you're missing out. You better get on the program today because every month I come out with a really good book and I want everyone to be able to be educated but also helping you to unlock things in you. Books and education help unlock things that you that are in you that you didn't realize was already in you too. So it's a, it's a type of respecting yourself to say, I need a key to unlock the things inside of me that maybe I don't know how to unlock. Well, that's what wisdom does. Wisdom helps things to get unlocked. All right, things that have been jarred, hey, let's get that thing flowing in your life again because you owe it yourself and you owe it to the world to see this amazing person that you are in God. So thank you so much. As always, I'll close with this. If you don't like your day, hey, start thinking differently. Shift your thinking and watch your day change today. God bless. This has been the Thoughts Become Things podcast with Jeremy Lopez, helping you reach your highest creative potential that God has for you. For more episodes, products, and information on Jeremy, visit www.identitynetwork.net.